What's going on everyone? So Austin Reeves. I've been very critical of Austin Reeves the last you know month or so. Um, and it's been warranted, right? Like he was incredibly inconsistent last season. He was consistently inconsistent last season. Uh, shot incredibly poorly in the playoffs, 28% from three. And then in preseason was has been terrible. I mean, 0 of 7 games, 0 of 5 games, 1 of 7 games. Like, it's just, it's been very bad him shooting the basketball. I love his defensive intensity. I love his aggression of attacking teams and not settling, right? Like, there are things that I've highlighted that I've really been impressed with Austin Reeves, uh, but his shooting has been a concern. It really had been until the Phoenix Suns game, in which he shot the ball incredibly, right? So... Austin Reeves dropped 26 points. He also had four rebounds, eight assists. I uh, was eight of 12 from the floor, five of seven from three, uh, and also um, ended up with one block and three steals, uh, four turnovers. Need to tone that down a little bit and was a plus 13. This is the Austin Reeves that I want to see. And I'm not necessarily talking about the 26 point per game thing. Thing is, we saw this from Austin Reeves last year. And I hope, because we said this, I again, we have, I have live stream videos, I have regular videos, where we talked about on numerous occasions, like, is this the moment Austin Reeves figures it out and turns around? And he just did it last year. Now, it's early this year, so I'm hoping this is. Now, I'm not saying he has to go give you 26 and 8 a game, right? I'm not saying that he has to shoot 6 of 7 from 3-point range and just be lights out, shoot 70, 80% from the floor. No. It, but it's the consistency, right? And when he shoots the basketball well to a, to a point where teams have to respect it, you look at that Timberwolves game. He was 0-5 from three. Minnesota just eventually started sagging off of him. So then it made things harder for him to, because when he's knocking down shots, now teams have to close out. So now he can be aggressive and attack that closeout, get to his spots, get in the teeth of the defense, and then either get a bucket or make a play for somebody else, right? And this style of offense that the Lakers are running is tailor-made for Austin Reeves, tailor-made. That's why you're seeing his assist total starting to go up, right? He looks a lot more comfortable. I don't, so I still don't buy Austin Reeves point guard, but in this type of offensive structure and system, I do believe he can operate as such, right? If you're asking for Austin Reeves to bring the ball up and just wheel and deal all game and basically be Chris Paul out there, I just, I don't see him having a ton of success. But if in a offensive scheme or offensive system where you're not asking him to do that, you're asking him to be aggressive, you're asking him to find the cutter, you're asking him to do a lot of, like, just make plays, not really be a playmaker, Right? Where playmakers are guys that develop things from nothing. They're seeing things. They're breaking down the court in ways that, you know, uh, there's a lot of guys that can make plays. A lot of guys that can run the pick and roll in the basics and stuff like that. I'm talking about a guy that can turn something into nothing. Right? Austin Reeves, in this style of offense, can be that point. So I do trust him in this, and we're seeing him really be able to operate well as the as a playmaker. Uh, in this in this system as a guy that can make plays, right? So I really do like that. I do think that that kind of gives you some flexibility going forward, particularly with the D'Lo trade. Because the problem is, like, you trade D'Lo, you trade Gabe Vincent, it's like, okay, well, can Austin Reeves handle the point guard duties? Well, you're seeing him be able to do so, right? At least in this offensive system, which is great. That's what you want to see. So that way, when you do decide to pull off some type of trade, which D'Lo has really had his struggles, um... The only kind of boat of confidence that I have with D'Lo, as we saw this last year, him get off to an incredibly slow start, and then he started to, to get into a rhythm, get into a flow, and then he had a historically great shooting season, right? So my hope is that that's kind of where we're at right now, where it's like, ah, it's going to take him the first like handful of games to really start getting a flow. I would be shocked if D'Lo is on this roster come trade deadline. But until we trade him, we need him to be the best version of himself possible, right? Because the best he is, the better the Lakers are. Just like I've talked about with Austin Reeves, the better Austin Reeves is, the better that the Lakers are. And if Austin Reeves, not, I'm not I don't care if he gives us 26 games. 
whether it's 12, whether it's 15, whether it's 20, whatever. I have said numerous times, I believe Austin Reeves can be a 25 and five guy. 20 points, five rebounds, five assists a game. I mean, the way he's playing this season with the aggression, better rebounding, better uh, uh, playmaking, right? Making plays. I actually think that he could be probably better than that. But scoring wise, particularly shooting the basketball, we need him to be able to shoot the basketball with consistency, right? I don't care. Whatever his stats are. Whatever he he intends to be this season, we need him consistently to be that. Right? A lot of people talk, well, he was 37% last year. Yes, but he wasn't a 37% shooter. His average at the end of the year was 37%. But if you actually watched him play all season, he start, the first quarter of the season, he was 28%. Then he went to the bench in which he was shooting like, I think it was like 48% or something like that from three-point range uh, in that like, what was it, 10-game stint or whatever, where he got back, looked, was looking like Austin Reese. He was a leading uh, six-man of the year voting alongside Tim Hardaway Jr., who started the season as a six man, but Reeves was so good in that six man role, he immediately just skyrocketed, right? And then got back in the starting unit, had his struggles again, and then just kind of was like five games, five games, five games, five games, right? Five games good, five games bad, five games good, five games bad. And he was, it just totaled, right? Like LeBron in previous years. LeBron would finish the season 36% from three, but no one was like, oh man, he's. Uh, Great 36% three-pointer. No, it's just like he'd have like a month where he's like 22%. And then he'd have a month where he's like 70%. And it just like all would equal and add up and then average out at the end of the year to like 36, 37%. It's basically what Austin Reeves was. Where you see guys, like there's a difference between a guy who is 37% game in and game out, night in and night out. And then the outlier games, yeah, there's a game where he's 90%. There's a game where he's 23%, right? Like, those happen. But, like, out of 10 games, are eight of them, are you 38%? And then that you have that one game where you're 1 of 11, and then you have that game where you're, you know, 10 of 11, right? Like, that's the idea. And if Austin Reeves can be that, again, not saying he has to shoot, 80, 70, I think it was 71% from three-point range. Not saying he, I expect him or need him to do that. 37, 38%. If he can just be that on, you know, five attempts a game or something like that, that's huge. Because also him knocking those shots down, you saw in this game exactly what I've talked about. When he's hitting shots and he's starting to feel himself, right? One, his confidence level goes through the roof. But another thing is it opens things up for him and the Lakers, it opens up so much for this team and it opens up so much for Austin Reeves because now he can do what he likes to do and he can be aggressive and he can be physical and he can get into the defense and he can make the, those plays for players and he can, you know, you saw him, he's hitting shots. They got to start closing out. He can attack the closeout, get into the teeth. The defense comes and helps, boom, little Bounce pass, you know, dump pass right to Anthony Davis or, you know, a Jackson Hayes, and they're hammering it home, and he's just racking up the assist. And then when they don't come and help, oh, I'll just stop on a dime, elevate here, and knock it down, right? Cash. You see him just all of a sudden becomes a mismatch out there on the basketball court. But when he can't knock down the three ball with consistency, I know what you want to do, and I know the only option you have left. So I'm just going to sag off of you. I'm just going to let you, if you want to, shoot 10 threes, go ahead. I'll live with it. And if you start making, like if you're 0 of 5 and you make your next two, we'll start making those adjustments, right? But when he is in that, that like space where, hey, you got to respect Austin Reeves' jump shot, now he can, he can do more. Again, I love his aggression this season. I love it. Preseason, talked about it heavily. He's being aggressive. He's not settling. Right? Obviously, a game like this, you're hot. Keep shooting, buddy. Right? Like if you if you if you're five or six, shoot it. Right? Shoot that thing. Uh, go nine or ten, whatever. Right? But you know when it's not falling, 
I do like that Austin Reeves is aggressive. He's not settling. He's doing what he needs to do, still impact the game. And then defensively, he's been getting after it very well defensively. He's not going to ever be an elite, lockdown, just clamp defender, but he's been good enough. And that's what you need. You just need him to be serviceable. This is the Austin Reeves we need. We get this Austin Reeves. And again, not the 26 and 8 Austin Reeves. If he could do that, that'd be. Lakers are winning the championship this year. <laughs> that happens. Talking about like if he can be that like 15 to 20 point a game guy on efficiency as well as shooting the basketball, then the Lakers, good luck beating them this year. Seriously. Like that's what we need. We need that consistent third guy. And Austin Reeves is showing that. And then if we do get that third guy and Austin Reeves can slide over and be that fourth guy, but he can still maintain that efficiency, you, then you're definitely not beating this team. You know, the Lakers go get a Zach Levine and Austin Reeves can be 15, you know, five and five on, you know, 38% from three and 50% from the field. Like, you're not beating the Lakers. Just not. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion and I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, do you agree? Do you think like, yes, this is the Austin Reeves we need. This is the Austin Reeves that's great. It's the Austin Reeves that puts the Lakers in the driver's seat. Do you think, nah, like, you know, it's just, it's an outlier game. It's a fluke game. We need to see more from him. However you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me not. So we enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.